sounds like a good place to start. So I did a non, like a non, a not a challenge. And the first week was um, basically like you have a body talking about breath and then the ways that the spine moves. And so I thought I would just share how I might explore that or you might explore that on your own while you're sitting in a chair. You'll see I have a chair that does not swivel so that I know for sure I'm not going to slide anywhere. And uh, let's go kind of halfway here. <clears throat> so of all the stuff that your body does that you don't need to ask it to do, like circulating your blood, digesting your food, um, ovulating, uh, cell division, of all of those functions, your breath very often is the easiest to consciously control. Like try reversing the flow of blood. Cannot do that. Try breathing in and out. We can do that. And one of the great things about breath is the exhale is a signal for the body to relax. So the one I like to begin with always is just a very simple in through the nose and out of the mouth. And you might try it like this. So I can sigh in through the nose, out of the mouth. If you have a body that carries anxiety, this kind of connecting to breath might be a little bit activating, more so than you might enjoy or feel comfortable with. And if that's you today, I invite you just to pay attention to the exhale. Just notice your exhale and let your exhale be any way that it wants to be. So it could be like this. You might also bring a hand to your heart and a hand to your belly while breathing so that the embodiment, you're able to literally connect to self while you're moving air in and out of your lungs, in through the nose and out of the mouth. My cats are very active right now. I apologize for all sound that is about to happen. Right, so there's very simple breathing. Your breath, so now let's talk about like the aspect of breath a little bit. When thinking about sex, fun time, intimate, intimate moments, um, one of the ways that you can be present to that with the person, even if it's yourself, is to become present to your breath and to be just noticing you're breathing in and out, however you're breathing. Calm, regulated breath equals, for many, calm, regulated nervous system. We like that. We like coming into a moment regulated because then we can consent from a place of yes, we can engage from a more deeper, connected, intimate space. And it's so easy, just breathing in and out. If you cycle with another person, right? Breathing in together and out together, that can create a state, a flow state, and also co-regulate both of your nervous systems, which is super great. So that's basic breathing. Notice that you're breathing. It's embodied because you're present to the experience. It can get super fancy. It does not need to be. This is tea. And then <clears throat> something else 
to start playing with, and all of this is play. This is all just like an invitation for fun. Uh, something else to play with is the directions that your spine moves in. So not necessarily official formal postures or shapes, but noticing that your spine moves in six directions, assuming that your spine has mobility, right? Uh, if your spine does not have mobility in any of these directions, then I would encourage you to imagine the movement because your energy body, the energetic flow uh, is always there regardless of limitations of movement, okay? So the first way that a spine might move is forward. And since we're in a chair, you can just go forward like this. Look at that. I just go forward folded. And then you can lift up. Now, when you fold forward, do you notice that you just sort of intuitively exhale? It's almost like there's gonna be less space. So the exhale, when you come forward and then when you stand back up, inhale. So I'm just here. And again, here I am now breathing in and out and moving my spine forward and up. So when you go to embodiment classes, most of the forms that I've been exploring exposed to, I'm 53, I've been in this world for 50 years now, almost all of them exhale in contraction, exhale when we're getting smaller, going in, inhale to expand. If you have a sore back, you might want to experiment with your forward folds a little bit more rounded. And this kind of experimenting on your own just here, just noticing, like, how does my body feel when I do this today? I don't have a plan. Just sort of checking it out. Checking in like this is a wholesome way to feel into your body <clears throat> so that if sexy fun time is in your future, <clears throat> pardon me, you have a sense of how you are, how it feels in your body. So that's folding forward. And drinking water or tea, pardon me. Another way that your spine moves is backwards. And this can be super activating, uncomfortable, and surprising for some folks. So if you have an experience like that, you're not an outlier. And a way that I would encourage you to begin exploring this, I'm looking to see if I have a tool here, is to go slow. So back bending, if this is forward fold and I've exhaled, back bending, you can even just with your head, look at that. I don't have to go all the way forward. My POTS friends, my POTS people, people of the salt, we have to be so mindful, so aware. My dystonia friends, same thing, functional neurological disorder, like all of these states that either like confuse signals or literally like change how they manifest in the body. Just all that means for us, and I am one of us, is we customize. And I think the best way to begin customizing is go small and slow. So this might be a back bend right now. You could also back, I lean back, hold on to the chair. Back bending in general in yoga, um, yoga from India and in the Vedic context is a way to open the heart center, to expand the front of the spine, to be more receptive. These are seen as energizing. Within the context of something like a yin yoga or something more static, backbending can be a way to address pain and mobility 
Uh, so stick around, we'll definitely be talking about that at some point here. So breath in through the nose, out of the mouth. Nice and simple, unless it makes you feel dizzy, then you don't do it because we like to be comfortable. That's how we keep it wholesome. That need to be a challenge. On the exhale, we can fold forward. This is also, hey, um, this is also good fodder for if you ever go to like a vinyasa class and you get confused with the breathing, very similar patterns, right? So folding forward on the exhale <clears throat> and then inhaling, back bends are expansive. There we go. So here's a mobility thing you can do to, um, I'm just turning down my feet here, for bringing some mobility to the spine, reminding your cerebrospinal fluid that it is fluid. And then again, checking in, this is seated cat and cow. <clears throat> Right, working on the principle of the spine can go forward and backwards, arcing and also with breath, breath being inhaling to expand, exhaling to contract, seated cat and cow. So first just doing it and breathing however you breathe. So this is cow pose. If I was on my hands and knees, this would be like my utter Right, so here's a little bit of a back bend. For the angry cat, chin tucks in, round, here my hands are, rounding the spine. So if I was on my hands and knees, I would be rounded like an angry cat. And then taking the movement in a way that's like, oh, I wonder what's happening. I wonder how I'm feeling. So that you're observing and noticing, you might be like putting things, what is the word? Put a pin in it for later, just to notice, like I'm noticing where my SI is a little bit unhappy today, but I'm not gonna try to fix it right now. We're just noticing. So spine moves forward and back. Seated cat and cow. Another way your spine moves is side to side, which you can also use your chair to help you with. This is an awesome shape for um, sitting at a desk or like if you're a gamer and you're just at a computer a lot. So let one arm relax down. <laughs> Let one arm relax down, bring the other ear towards that shoulder. This, just the weight of this arm and this shape will hopefully bring some awareness, some attention, some hello to the side of your neck here. Doesn't need to be heroic, right? This is wholesome, we're exploring. Right? And it benefits intimate health because you're exploring how you feel in your actual GD body. And then you <laughs> can be there <laughs> with someone else. I laugh at it because it is kind of obvious and that simple. <clears throat> this is super relaxed here. This, this tissue is stretched. So taking this hand, and then use your arm, your hand to lift your head up. And then over to the other side. Might feel very different side to side. This kind of check-in, this kind of um, just like sitting, taking some breaths, moving your spine. For those of you who engage in, uh, B, D, and the other, 
uh, this is so good before a scene, I cannot tell you, because you'll have time to check in. You may not have time all the time, but it's a nice way to check in. Hand to the side of your head, up, and that's regardless of the role you play. Breath. <clears throat> Can make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> Here we go, slightly bigger. The more this arm reaches, the more active, the more sensation likely. This is a go-to for me, post mastectomy. Um, I do find that it helps with some of the pain that my body still carries. Side body. Sometimes I think about the side body as like zippers. Um, and also it's that, you know, it's the, it's the tipping point. It's that inflection point between the front and the back body. So if you subscribe to ideas of um, feminine and masculine, yin and yang in the body, and to you, they mean separation, here's a way to explore and consider them as connected, as they are connected. And to do this seated takes away the need to balance. It takes away the need to um, guard my body. I'm speaking for myself. And then even more with the sides, we can um, actually, do I wanna do that now? I don't, but if I wanted to make that side bend more, I could cross and do it this way. So here I'm able to use my legs as more leverage. And I can and will and do like routines for folks. These principles are so simple. Forward, back, side, side, twist. It's the other way the spine moves. Six directions. One, two, three, four, twist. Twist and twist. So notice if I'm using the chair here, to breathe while you twist, you would inhale and then exhale into the twist. Because even though it's expanding, it's also not. And then I can use this chair to help keep my legs, my pelvis a little bit steady. Twist. Going for where can I stay? Where is it super comfortable? Where is it available? Where can I, um, these are all questions I asked myself that I'm encouraging you to ask. Where can I stay? Where can I be? What is the nature of the discomfort? Is the discomfort um, sharp shooting? Like, you know, my back is out, oh my goodness. Is the nature of the discomfort just sort of like in the background. Um, if you carry chronic illness, chronic pain, chronic anything, disability, these landscapes, especially the inner landscapes, they're going to be unique. I was just having a conversation, getting a little closer here. I was having a conversation earlier this week with someone, we were speaking about how interoception or just like understanding the signals from your body can be flavored, can be a little spicy or somewhat <laughs> completely difficult to, to find for folks who carry different kinds of neurodivergencies. And I'm thinking specifically of autism and trauma right now. I know that there are many, many other kinds of neurodivergencies. Autism would be a neurodivergency that you're born with, come out of the womb that way. Trauma, particularly complex trauma, is a neurodivergency that, that you acquire. We become traumatized, even if it's birth trauma. I am one, one such person. And introception, those, the signals from the body that let us know hunger, comfort, discomfort, if you have existed in a world 
where especially for late diagnosed women, people who were assigned female at birth, we have a lot of conditioning to ignore. It's not that bad. It doesn't hurt that bad. That's not how it works. You're just this, you're just that. So once you start tuning in, especially if you're wanting to tune in in a way that helps you increase your availability and the, the, how you experience pleasure connecting with another person or people, regardless of what that is, it can be confusing. So, so go slow and start wholesome. There's no need to, to ramp up that until you have a this. Yes, I know. I'm speaking in random words. Trauma. So I see a lot of folks who are resolving trauma. And when I say resolving trauma, I'm talking about like religious trauma, very early childhood essay um, and other atrocities that folks, you know, cancer and whatnot. The, especially for female bodied individuals, um, and that is just who I'm seeing a lot of right now. Um, I do see folks from like a gender bending place, but let's just keep it assuming I, identity and biology are in alignment, which would be cisgender. Um, for women who have experienced trauma, this is in my, my experience as a somatics embodiment person, I am not a clinician. I send people to trained licensed professionals for that. But when we're doing this kind of like tuning in, there's a terror that I can feel from folks um, and also that they express between the idea. I have this idea of intimacy. I have this idea of wanting to connect. I have this idea and then the reality of it. And some of that is because of the interoception. Some of that is because you're actually starting to feel in the body, a body that has potentially been violated or ignored or injured, wounded. And while I would very happily you know, hang myself naked in the middle of a room by my toe and do heinous acts for education. Not everybody is that way. So we just kind of start easy, start simple and start wholesome. Wholesome meaning like playful, wholesome meaning with no purpose other than I am enjoying the fact that I exist. This wholesome attitude I'm getting ready to head off soon here. This wholesome attitude is the core principle. It is one of the core principles of the tantric system I'm in, um, which is, if we look at the middle guy there, that's Lao Tzu, um, that's Confucius, and that's Xuanza. These are my three wise men. But Lao Tzu, what he um, shares um, in Tao, you know, this idea, oh my goodness, I forgot it. I didn't take my ADHD medication. It doesn't, who cares about the theory? I care about the theory. What I want you to know, oh, that's right. The Taoist tantric um, exercises and practices that do come into multiple O's, longer time to be engaged, uh, a more full-bodied experience. They see that energy that arousal energy is inherently wholesome. There's nothing morally wrong or inherently any way other than it's present and it's powerful. And I was speaking with a, a, one of the trauma specialists who refers folks to me and she was like, well, how do I talk about arousal when I'm speaking with folks? Because often we hear arousal this is how I'm using arousal. We hear arousal and it maps to the big O, 
why I said, well, no, because arousal is also creative process. It's curiosity. It's inventing. It's playing. It's having a dance party. It's experimenting with the six ways your spine moves just to see, just to see and notice. And then if you can hold the experience in positive regard, I'm saying the experience, meaning like, how shall I say, to, to assume that it's inherently good. It is inherently worthy, just like you, inherently worthy because you exist. Then that playfulness and this awareness and this tuning into an understanding introception signals from the body, no susception, how we understand pain, autists, High, heavy pain thresholds, people with chronic pain, hello. The way that our nociception, <laughs> I keep saying us because I keep being one. Um, the way that nociception occurs in our body minds is very likely different because of the chronic pain, because of the autism, because our brains are literally wired differently. They're neurodivergent. So, does this help us in communicating with healthcare providers? I cannot answer that. I can tell you it's been my experience that it helps me at least in understanding what the signals are. And, and so I'll leave you with this tale and then I will remember that I told you this story. So I was paralyzed from the waist down in 2019 um, because of trauma, because of relational trauma that wasn't the intimacy that you would expect. But I, my response was, dorsal shut down, trauma, just terrible. And um, I was able to, when, how shall I say, I was experiencing a lot of pain, a lot, a lot of pain. When I confirmed that the pain I was experiencing was not signaling damage, that it was a functional problem, not a physical problem, but I would say the functional is physical because how do we separate? We don't. We don't separate the body and the mind here at least, but that's fine. When they told me it was not, you know, because of how my nervous system is physically, I was like, oh, okay. So that pain, that pain, I treated and related to very differently than the pain I still carry from my mastectomy, which is still a disruption in my nervous system but the signals that discomfort could mean injury and harm. So there's a, if you want a possible pathway here to get, get really kind of intimate and direct with your own discomfort, not in a way that says, oh, please make me uncomfortable. I mean, unless that's your thing. <laughs> is my thing, but it doesn't have to. It can just be, here I am experiment, experimenting with my body as it is today, as I feel it right now, breathing in through the nose, out of the mouth, six directions, forward, back, side, side, twist. And you can do it hanging out as you have your tea in the morning. I need to go fill out an intake form because I have a private instructor coming over in two hours to help me <laughs> with my interception. <laughs> because yes, sometimes we do need outside assistance and I'm very happy to have colleagues in the area who are qualified. So I will see you soon. If you're in Pittsburgh, it's Leanne Cutright. This is Forest Yoga, go for it. Okay, bye. And now come to me for Yin, go to her and Mike and everyone else for that. See ya.